Hey YouTube, I'm back to do a quick video for a question I had from uh, one of one of the viewers on issues with no fire on their uh, vintage Mercury outboard. Um, so I, I had the advantage of testing out my ignition system pretty much on the bench last year in the fall when I had this all taken down and rebuilt. So if, if you don't have that luxury, um, you can totally do it with the engine assembled. There's just a couple of precautions. First is anything that involves rotating or revolving the trigger when it's fully assembled like this, um, you'll, you'll typically do it through the starter, right? Uh, the concern I would say that you need to be aware of there is that you're gonna wanna hook up a set of muffs uh, because if you're rolling this over dry, uh, you can you can damage the impeller on your water pump and that's a, that's a mofo to get up in there and get that replaced, right? So just a word of caution, if, if you've got this fully assembled and you're gonna use the starter to, to roll it over to test this out, just make sure you hook up a set of uh, a muffs and, and hook it up to a water supply just to protect your impeller. Um, that being said, I would say for the most part, uh, this is a type three ignition system. So it's a type three Thunderbolt, solid state ignition or capacitive discharge, whatever you wanna call it. It's pretty simple. Um, there's three key components. And honestly, I think these are typically pretty bulletproof. Uh, so I would say check wiring first. So on the diagnostic tree of things to look for, for no spark, uh, check wiring first, okay? Um, I'll walk through the components and then I'll walk through the wiring and then hopefully you can check that out and, and solve your problem. Uh, so first and foremost, we'll start with the trigger. So purely mechanical device, it's got three connections on it. That's it, electrical connections. You'll see a brown, a white, and a black and they're color coded on the box kind of these are pretty old so the black's kind of looking a little brownish and the brown's looking kind of closer to white but you get the idea brown white black that's how those hook up okay now this is looking you know looking at the engine towards the stern of the boat this would be on the right hand side okay so that's how those hook up you'll notice there's two other connections there I would recommend removing those. So there's a white connection that goes up and over to a switch. That is your, that's your tilt switch. So that's an interlock feature that de-energizes your ignition in the event that your motor is tilted past 45 degrees. Uh, obvious, an obvious safety feature, right? So what that does is basically that switch shorts. Once that gets above 45 degrees, when that switch goes level, that mercury switch makes, and then it just shorts that whole connection down to the to the ground. So take that off, you know, as far as troubleshooting, that could be part of your problem. You could have a bad switch that's just, that's just made all the time. Um, uh, similarly, I, you'll see this orange wire. That's kind of unique for my boat, but uh, this originally didn't have on the wiring diagram anything set up for um, what I call a tether kill switch. So it's another safety feature. That would be like the tether kill switch that you attach to your life vest. So if you, if you ditch out of the boat, it it um, it kills the ignition at the control box, uh, you know, up by the helm. So that's what that orange wire is on my boat. And again, it, it serves basically the same function as that switch, right? It just shorts out the box so that way it will not energize any spark, um, okay? So again, if you've got a setup like that, if you remove that, you could potentially isolate another problem. Again, those would be like ground fault problems, which are pretty typical for wiring or switches, right? Um, but purely, if you wanna run this like in a bench test capacity, the only thing you need on this side hooked up are those three key wires the brown, the white, and the black that come out of your trigger, okay? Now, coming over to the other side, the second component is your coil. Super simple, two-wire connection. And then, obviously, the spark output goes right to your, uh, to your trigger. Um, that's just to distribute spark. If you want to test this out, you can just hook your, your spark tester right to that if you want. Um, 
but basically that's got a ground that goes right to the case on your box. So you'll see kind of down there on the bottom. And then it also has a black wire that goes up top. Now, mine is green, those could be black, but it's at the very top. That's the black wire that comes out of your coil, okay? The only other two mission critical connections here are that white one and the red one at the bottom. The white one is your heat ignition, so that would be uh, positive when your ignition is in the run position. And then the red one is just battery. So that's, you know, that's, I guess for lack of a better term, would be hot all the time, all right? Regardless of the switch position. So those two in, you know, for purposes of testing, all you need to do is put positive battery onto those two terminals. However you want to do it. You can put two leads from the positive post on your battery to both of those terminals, or you can just jump them out, it doesn't matter. But uh, as soon as you put positive, on those two, you've got your coil hooked up appropriately, right? So the black wire and the ground to your coil. And then these three guys are hooked up over here. That ignition system will work on the bench, right? So you can spin, spin the rotor. And if you, as long as you have a spark gap hooked up, that's going to a common ground that will, that should theoretically spark. All right. So check that wiring. If the wiring is the source of your problem, then problem solved, correct it. If not, then you have to look a little bit deeper. Um, then it's possibly the components, right? So the trigger, the box or the coil, you might have to consider replacing those or maybe digging deeper into those and understand if you have um, more electrical gremlins. Again, these are really simple. Um, my suspicion would be, again, it's it's typically wiring, right? Well, for a coil, you know, a coil a coil is a coil, but the um, the failure, I think, I, on the trigger would most likely be something in the wires that go up into the trigger itself. So you might end up having to tear that apart and take a look at those connections. Um, also, the, the 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 all the sophisticated electronics, I'll call them, are in that in that capacitive di discharge box in that switch box. You can't tap into that. So if you can't test that, if you test that in you know in the method I explained before and you can get nothing out of it, um, then I, I would suggest replacing that. But before you do that, right, check all your wires, because I think usually wiring is probably the biggest problem. Um, the only other thing to mention too is your, um, your trigger does have a ground as well. So there's a ground strap that goes from the top of your trigger back to the case. Make sure that you've got that hooked up and it's got good integrity, all right? I hope this helps. Um, let me know how it works out for you. If, uh, if it's still not working, drop me a line. We'll see if we can help you out.